Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation today. And today we are going to teach you everything about right here, A calculus cholecystitis. Why should we talk about A calculus cholecystitis? Somebody tell me. What is the reason? It's usually seen in like inpatients. Okay, so what? A lot, of, a lot of diseases we see in patients. But what is the main reason? Why is it people need to know about A calculus? It has very high mortality. Very high mortality. Okay, give this man an award for that. The mortality, what does it say right here? Somebody read that? Right. Mortality right? Like mortality this. like 10 to 50 percent, my friends. Okay. So if you miss this, there is the complications are extremely high. And always, you know, I tell everyone when I teach, it's very important to express the numbers. So you tell me the mortality rate is up in 50 percent. That kind of tell me what's going on. You know the importance of the situation. You know the how the problem is a problem adding, how serious the problem is, okay? So somebody tell me, what is the definition one more time? Just say A, calculus cholecystitis. Somebody tell me the definition. It's an acute life-threatening necroinflammatory disorder of gallbladder okay. and it's usually seen in critically ill patients. Okay, so I'm going to say it again, acute life-threatening, remember that, I'm going to underline the word, okay? What is the... Now, somebody tell me the mortality in acute cholecystitis. Now, what is the mortality in acute cholecystitis? Just give me a number. 1%. 1%? Wrong? 0.1%. It's around like 1 to 3, 1% 3 I would say, an average mortality. Okay, so what is the mortality again? This patient up to 50%. Okay, remember that. Life-threatening, necroinflammatory disorder, gallbladder, and usually seen in critically ill patient, and no stones. Right? Yes. So we'll just write up here. No stones. You will not see stones. Okay? Not associated with the gallstones. That is the main important thing. So remember, acute cholecystitis, mainly cholelithiasis, obstructing the cystic duct, or it could be common bile duct also. We talked about it. In this situation, you will not see stones. Okay? So we'll come back to the pathophysiology before. Now let's look at the epidemiology. What is the most important thing in the epidemiology we need to know? What is the most important thing? It's common, common, in in, common in males. males yeah. What about acute cholecystitis? What's the common in? Females. Huh? Females, Females, right? This is more three times more likely in men. And a five to ten percent of around the acute cholecystitis, you can say like kind of belong to this category. Okay? So this remember the men. They if you're writing a question, let's say if I'm say like a 45-year-old uh, came with abdominal pill, right up about maybe like we'll come back to that, or suspecting cholecystitis, you have to think about a calculus cholecystitis. Everybody got that? Now, what are the like etiology? Mainly this type of situation mainly is seen in the ICU, like critically ill patient. Remember that, okay? Surgery. When I talk about surgery, there are a lot of incidents about somebody doing like heart surgery, post surgery. You can have cholecystitis. I think like one to two percent a calculus cholecystitis. Remember that, okay? Infection, CMV, sepsis, uh, septic shock, prolonged fasting. Also, what is going on in the society now? What is everybody trying to do to lose weight? Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. So somebody need to do a study. What's going on? These people are, you know, more prone to a calculus cholecystitis or something like that. That's like a future study. You need to be done on that, right? It's uh, one of the fastest <laughs> growing phenomena. People trying to lose weight, right? And then TPM, that can also, any type of impact from viral bacteria and all of that, okay? We'll come back to that. Immunodeficiency. So what are the clinical features? When you talk about, uh, you know, the main thing when you talk about acute cholecystitis is right upper quadrant pain. So what percentage of the people uh, in um, A calculus cholecystitis can have right upper quadrant pain? Somebody tell me. Only 25%. Only 25%. Okay, remember. This is the number we need to know right here. Again, we express in numbers, so they might not have right upper quadrant pain. Okay, so I'm going to write it up here, 25 percent only. Remember that. Okay, then you have the classic radiation fever, nausea, vomiting, or Murphy sign. Okay, the problem with the Murphy sign. What is the problem with the Murphy sign in this situation? Right. Most of these patients are like where? Critically ill in the ICU, maybe they're unconscious or they cannot express themselves, right? They might not exhibit, you may not be able to exhibit the Murphy sign. Just be careful. But those are the mainly the cholecystitis changes, right? Anybody, any questions on this part? 
Okay, now let's look at pathophysiology, what happens, right? So the main thing on the pathophysiology is shock, sepsis, heart failure, hemorrhage, where any time when the air, I mean, you know, the blood circulation is compromised, okay? Especially what when you talk about the sprangling circulation, right? When you have a shock, when you have septic shock, a lot of situation, the, um, you know, the blood pressure drops, and then you can have decreased primary circulation, then you get ischemia, and then you have thickening of the gallbladder wall, right? We talk about why is it important gallbladder wall thickening? Why is it important? What is the size of the gallbladder wall? Somebody tell me the number. Four millimeter. Four, four millimeter. Always remember that, okay? We talked about it before. You need to know that. It's four millimeter usually. So <clears throat> this can become more than four millimeter, okay? Um, loss of mucosal integrity, bacterial invasion. When you talk about the bacteria, remember E. coli, protease, enterococcus are the most, the most common if you have to pick, I would say E. coli. Okay, and then what does it do? Um, it goes um, gallbladder inflammation, you know, and then what happens is like perforation and then gangrene, all of this kind of develop later. Okay, so that is like one part. The other part is dehydration. Dehydration, intermittent fasting also. What happened in the intermittent fasting, right? There's like a less, uh, I mean, I mean circul circulation, intravascular volume goes down. So what happened? Bile viscosity increases, okay? And then massive transfusion also, what happens is like viscosity increases. Remember that. Um, and then what do you, it will lead to highly concentrated bile, tax, uh, toxic lysolacetine released, and then inflammation, necrosis, perforation, sepsis, and death. Everybody got that? Okay, and then you can have prolonged ICU stay, um, decreased cholecystokine, and that's what like stimulate gallbladder, right? And then um, bile stasis, what happened bile stasis, increased bile viscosity. Remember, you're not seeing any stone here, but everything else is kind of affected. Okay, everybody understood the pathophysiology. If you look at the labs, um, CBC, LFT, and all of this check, remember amylase is very, very important, okay? Um, most of these people, like one of the diagnostic criteria is you have uh, ultrasound finding and then amylase increased without pancreatitis, okay? Lipase is usually normal. So you have to, that's like one of the uh, good, I mean, uh, one of the criteria you can use to diagnose. Now, when you look at the ultrasound, right, that's like the number one. When you talk about the sensitivity and specificity, it's pretty high. Almost like 93, 95%, right, for um, uh, ultrasound of the gallbladder. Now, you will not find the stone, right? So what are the things we're looking for? Somebody tell me, what are the things we're looking for? Gallbladder wall thickening greater than four millimeter. Okay, remember, you see the gallbladder wall thickening right yes. here, greater than four millimeter. What are the other things? What is this? Pericolicystic fluid. Pericolicystic fluid. Okay, those are the finding, characteristic finding you're going to find when you do an ultrasound of the uh, uh, gallbladder. Remember that. And then, if you, and the next thing you can do is like hide a scan. Okay, you have to be very careful up here, right? In acute cholecystitis, how do, how do we somebody do hide a scan? Somebody tell me. So how do they how do they do uh, iris scan? So initially they inject a radio a radio tracer into the uh, IV. Okay. And then the patient is taken into the feeder scan machine. Okay. Where uh, the they observe the way the tracer is going. Yeah. Like it goes from the hepatic veins, hepatic ducts. Okay. Into the cystic duct. So you can come hepatic. over here and it goes everywhere, right? Yes. So what happened when you have a stone block right here? You will not visualize the gallbladder. Okay, in acute cholecystitis, most likely, right? Because cystic duct is a uh, uh, Extracted, the dye is not going to go. Non visualization is the diagnosis. What happened over here? Can you, I mean, you can still go see gallbladder. There's no obstruction right here from the stone, right? So, what do you do when you do HIDA? You give something called cholecystokinin. Okay, that's going to stimulate gallbladder. And then you look at the ejection fraction. That's what I'm looking for. If it is like less than 25% to 30%, then it's more like a diagnostic right there. So you need to understand why, what is the difference between HIDA in acute cholecystitis and acalculus cholecystitis. It's important to do cholecystokinin, right? Stimulate and all that. With the HIDA scan, probably the best thing to look at the gallbladder over here. Okay, so you want to know is there's like a stasis of the, um, uh, I mean, of the uh, uh, gallbladder. Okay, then you can do CT of the contrast pretty much, not that sensitive and specificity. Why do it? Um, but 
And then treatment, mainly NPO, IV flow is analgesic, IV antibiotic. This patient's probably is better to give like strong antibiotic, right? And then cover for like, you know, I can use IV zosin or meropenem, uh, life-threatening situation, imipenem. The, the reason for that, you know, we look at the mortality. Anytime I treat somebody, I look at the mortality. There's 50% mortality. I should give it the strong antibiotic to decrease anything the mortality. Remember that, okay? And then if there's uh, definitely um, lapros laparoscopic cholecystectomy we have to do, right? Antibiotic, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and then um, high-risk patient, we can do like a cholecystostomy tube percutaneous called PCT okay studies have shown the mortality rate the data is not very clear but I think that's the only thing in the situation you can do if they're high risk like you know you can't do cholecystostomy I mean, they die on the table anyway so always try the percutaneous cholecystostomy tube remember that but again studies have shown decreased mortality is not a very significant in that patient remember that so what are the complications you can have gangrenous polycystitis you can have necrosis fistula perforation and a lot of complications below that right so remember the main thing remember i said like clinical first in this patient one mortality rate up to 50 percent take it very very seriously right and then number two right upper bottom main may be only like 25 percent of the people so you might not find that if you don't a lot of our mind is like there's no right upper bottom pain right there's no cholecystitis right there are no abdominal pain these people in the icu are critically ill my patient right so you have to remember that and then hyperamylesemia without increase in life base okay without increase without pancreatitis Okay, so I'm going to write it out here. Usually lipase, no lipase, right? Yes. Lipase is normal. Only amylase is going to be increased. Okay, so, so I'm just going to uh, summarize my um, the presentation a little bit. Um, acute, no, I mean acute life-threatening is the word. No gallstones. Men, three times more, right? And then uh, you have to worry about prong fasting, TP, and any kind of sepsis. Right upper quadrant is going to be absent and 75% of the people, only present in 25% of the patient. And then we come up here, we look at all where the circulation is compromised, shock, CHF, all of this, right? Hemorrhage, you got decreased spanking circulation, gallbladder ischemia, put the cascade down and your gallbladder is pretty much necrosis perforation. Then you have dehydration, right? Then you, I mean, what happened? Increased bile um, viscosity and then you have, what else? Massive transfusion can affect. We talk about prolonged ICU stay, decreased cholecystokinin. Eventually, all this happened is gallbladder inflammation, necrosis. In the labs, pay attention to amylase without increase in lipase or without pancreatitis. And the imaging study, there will not be stone, but four millimeter gallbladder thickening is more than that. Pericholecystic fluid is going to be there. And then HIDA scan, please use cholecystokinin. You need to know why we're using cholecystokinin, right? Nicule cholecysto, I mean, the, the, the gallbladder is going to be visualized, but we're looking at the contraction, okay? And then treat with a good antibiotic. Make sure you take the gallbladder out, cholecystectomy. In high risk people, do PCT, percutaneous cholecystostomy tube. And then these are the clinical pores, mortality, right upper quarter pain, hyperamylosemia. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you again.